Hi everyone. Do you want to know what disease processes you're going to be given on your clinical simulation exam? If so, here it is. I posted this this morning on my Instagram account and on my Facebook account. So if you want just the picture of this, go to that. But listen to the end of this video. I'm gonna give you some insight as to what you can expect. Now, this comes directly from the NBRC, from the detailed content outline. Um, somebody had already asked me, well, it says it was published in 2020 and it's outdated. No, it's not. The exam hasn't changed since 2020, so this is still relevant. Okay, so you are going to have 20 clinical simulations. So you can see the total down here at the bottom is 20. All right, of those 20, you can expect seven of them to be adult chronic airways disease. A Adult chronic airway diseases are the C-babe diseases. Okay, you can expect two of those to have, uh, you will have to decide when to intubate and how to mechanically ventilate that person. So you should have some knowledge about that. Two of those will deal with non-invasive management. That means BiPAP, okay? Um, so medical treatment, non-invasive pressure ventilation. So you should be prepared to end up putting somebody with one of the C-babe disorders on a BiPAP. Um, there will be one outpatient management of COPD. So this can be medical treatment in a uh, in an kind of an uh, outside of the hospital, so a clinic setting. This can be discharge planning. This could be a scenario that is in a rehab unit. You will have one outpatient management of asthma. Now, listen to me here. When we're talking about management of COPD and management of asthma, that's gold and GINA guidelines, okay? So if you're not familiar with the gold and GINA guidelines, you need to be. All right, and then there's gonna be one that deals specifically with diagnosis of one of the CBABE diseases. So if I were guessing, I would say this is more than likely gonna have some PFTs to it. Okay, so just so you know, you need to expect these disorders, okay, adult chronic airways disease. You will have one adult trauma. I don't know what that adult trauma is gonna be, but if I were guessing, it might have to do with like some kind of crushing chest injury, okay? Adult cardiovascular, you will have two of those. Those two will deal with um, heart failure, okay? One will have heart failure, so probably left ventricular failure, congestive heart failure, might include some hemodynamics. And the other one, <laughs> that can pull from an assortment of things. It could be just something with a simple arrhythmia. So know your ACLS rhythms and how to treat it. It could be pulmonary hypertension. It could be um, an MI, uh, infarction or ischemia. So be familiar with your ACLS MI chapter, or it can be a pulmonary embolism, okay? And if it is, that's gonna be Paco Pico Paco. Um, you're gonna have one, adult neurological or neuromuscular, so only one. So this could maybe be a closed head injury or it could be Guillain-Barre or myasthenia, myasthenia gravis or some other type of neuromuscular disease. If it is a neuromuscular disease, you need to be thinking about monitoring spontaneous pulmonary mechanics, knowing what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. All right, you will have five adult medical or surgical patients. One of those will be cystic fibrosis or non-cystic fibrosis bronchiectasis. Okay, did you hear me? You are going to have a CF patient or a bronchiectasis patient. And if you're weak on that, you need to go back and you need to study those two disease processes. You will have an infectious disease. I know that's wide. It may be a pneumonia. It may be tuberculosis. It may be something else, but don't get lost in the weeds. If they give you an infectious disease process, they expect you to be a respiratory therapist, not an infectious disease doctor, okay? So maintain the airway, make sure you ventilate and oxygenate that patient appropriately. ARDS. 
you need to know your ARDS net protocol for mechanical ventilation. And then others, you may have an immunocompromised person, somebody that is HIV positive or has AIDS. Now, this is kind of weird, shock. That just means a profoundly low blood pressure for whatever reason. It may be a bariatric patient, and I know we don't know about bariatric patients, but I am a respiratory therapist, and I know that's gonna be an, ab an abdominal procedure, so I'm going to have to be aware of atelectasis. And then the psychiatric, Okay, again, they don't expect you to treat the psychiatric problem, but they may give you a psychiatric patient that is having trouble ventilating your oxygenating. Okay, remember you're a respiratory therapist and the clinical simulation you have to deal with has to do with basic respiratory care. All right, you are gonna have two pediatrics, okay? Two, one of them will be pediatric asthma. How easy is that? You know exactly what to study, okay? The GINA guidelines has a section for pediatrics. Look over it. Um, and then the other one could be an infectious disease. If I were guessing, I would say that would, would be Crouper epiglottitis. It could be bronchiolitis, so an infection with the respiratory syncytial virus. It could be BPD meaning a chronic lung disease, we gave the infant that disease state because we beat up their lungs when they were on the vent, or it can be a congenital defect. So um, maybe look over your heart defects, although that might be something more um, associated with a neonate. All right, speaking of neonates, you're going to have two neonatal um, simulation. One will be respiratory distress syndrome, IRDS, look over it, okay? And one will have to do with resuscitation. I would be prepared for that resuscitation to be in the delivery room, so APGAR might be part of that. So anyway, here are those disease processes. I hope this has helped. If you need further help with studying for the clinical simulation exam, I have a CSE success course, so message me if you're interested. See you soon.